Hi, in this video we are going to talk about an important electrophysiological property of neuron known as the input resistance. You might have heard about this term but you are not so familiar with it and you don't understand it. So at the end of this video this particular term would be completely clear. So it's an intrinsic property of the neuron. So what does intrinsic property mean? That means it is something unique to every neuron. So what does input resistance tells us? So input resistance tells us about the excitability of the neuron. That how much the neuron can get excitable when you inject a current. So whenever we inject a current, we see if the current is actually beyond the threshold, we would see a all or none phenomena, which is the action potential, right? Now, this action potential is nothing but a voltage change or delta change in the voltage. And we know from Ohm's law that voltage is proportional to current. And you can remove that and you can say V equal to IR. And in this case, it's input resistance. So it's R in. So input resistance is nothing but the ratio of voltage by current. So this current, you are actually injecting this current and the voltage de deflection is basically recorded by you. And the ratio of the two is known as the input resistance. Now we very often compare a neuron to be actually a RC circuit, right? we very much compared the neuron to be an RC circuit. So here we have a capacitor component and we have a resistor component. Now whenever we inject some amount of current in this circuit, first the current is used to charge the capacitor and then it is flowing through the resistor. So let's see, let's try an experiment. So in this experiment, we are going to inject some current and we are going to look at the voltage responses. And in this particular case, we are going to inject uh, some negative current. So let's say, so we are going to inject some negative current in a stepwise fashion. And this step increment is pretty much uh, constant. And what would happen, this initial current, it's a small magnitude of current, so it would be essentially charging the capacitor. And when we stop the current, it would be discharging the capacitor. So we have a increase followed by reaching a steady state and then there is a discharging phase. Then eventually the magnitude would grow and reach a plateau. So for each injected current range, we are getting a voltage deflection. So we are inputting some current. For each current change, we are also getting a change in the voltage. And the ratio of this voltage versus current is known as input resistance. Now at a particular defined voltage or at a particular in de defined input current, we can calculate the input resistance and thereby plot a graph of input resistance, right? Now the question is what does this input resistance tells us? And at a empirical level or at a molecular level, what does input resistance mean? So let's look at that. So here is a neuron and let us imagine this is we are calling neuron 1 and here there is another neuron we are calling this as neuron 2 okay now neuron 1 has a very high input resistance and neuron 2 has small input resistance so what is different in between these two neurons. So whenever we have high input resistance, that means this neuron is more, this means this neuron is more excitable and this neuron, the neuron 2, is less excitable compared to the neuron 1. Okay, so then what does that mean in terms of cellular level? 
in electrophysiological level that means you give a small current very small current and you are able to get a large voltage deflection but here upon giving a small current you are getting only a small voltage deflection or even getting in order to achieve the same amount of voltage deflection what we have gone uh, got for, uh, earlier we have to really give a very high current so input current is different so this particular neuron the first neuron is way more excitable that means a small change in current can give rise to a huge change in the voltage and why it is so because the change of the voltage and the change of the current is actually our input resistance and now input resistance is a constant term so if there is a sort of like small change in the uh, voltage in or a small change in the current in order to make it constant the change in the voltage would be big right now what we are going to try to understand that at a cellular level what is different so let us look at the axons or the dendrites of these cells so when there is a very high input resistance that means the conductor or the transporters or the ion channels that are present are actually in a closed configuration that means not too much ions are leaking outside and that is why it is like a sealed hose pipe and water can nicely flow inside it so charge can flow nicely across these uh, neurons but in this situation of neuron 2 we would predict that there are a lot of channels which are in an open configuration and that is why a lot of leak of charges are happening as a result it is very difficult to excite this neuron we have to increase our uh, injectable current to get a same amount of voltage deflection and this is the overall picture about uh, input resistance and how what we can understand from input resistance so i hope you enjoyed this video if you like this video give it a quick thumbs up don't forget to like share and subscribe thank you